Welcome to Three Things I Know For Sure, where we talk to the most amazing experts on the planet to tell us just three things that they know for sure about, like 100% sure, on any topic at all that they're passionate about. Now, the fun part is, I have no idea what their topic is, so I'll be just as surprised as you. I'm Josh Golden, your host, and today on the show we have Will Gadara, restaurateur and former co-owner of Eleven Madison Park. In his young life, he became an expert on restaurants, and in the business, he took a great New York food restaurant to the number one restaurant in the world, ladies and gentlemen. And he wrote about it all in a new book I have here called Unreasonable Hospitality. So today, on to our episode and the topic. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Will Gadara. Tell me, Will, what's our topic for today, sir? I'm gonna be telling you the three things I know for sure about a proper Italian-American restaurant. Ooh, I I love Italian restaurants. Uh, (laughs) Big fan, big fan, big fan of Italy in general, wine. Lots of things. I want you to hit the three things and then we're gonna go into why you chose it. Okay, one, they need to have a very, very good chicken parmesan. (laughs) Wait, that's a requirement? That's a requirement. That's an (laughs) absolute requirement for a good Italian American restaurant. Oh, I had no idea. Okay, I'm sorry. That's one, that's fabulous. Okay, but you know this for sure though. This is for sure. For sure. Okay, okay. Absolutely (laughs) for sure. Number two. two. At some point during your time there, you need to hear Sinatra on the plate. <laughs> Frank Sinatra is part of the critical Italian sure. restaurant. That's for sure. Italian American restaurant. Italian American. Sorry, sorry. Italian American. Sorry. American. sorry. Yes. Go ahead. And number three. And three. Even if it's the first time you've ever been there. Yeah. They make you feel like you're a regular. Mm, that's a good one. I like that for three. So let's go your 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 first uh, your first thing you know for sure about Italian American restaurants. I'm I'm interested to hear. I mean, chicken parm. I make a good. I think I make a. I mean, maybe I don't make a good chicken parm. How how could I how could I know? I, I am I am. Uh, can you share with me how to make a better chicken parm? One, and then uh, if you can expand into why chicken parm. I mean, it's number one on your list, Will. I mean, geez, this is a high priority item. Well, no, 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 because I think in a restaurant's chicken parm, in an Italian-American restaurant. Sorry, Italian-American restaurant. restaurant. This is the clarity. Yeah, no, it's it's an important clarity because there's, like, that's that makes the restaurant very specific. I think the chicken parm tells you a lot about the restaurant. And so let me unpack this for a little bit. Unpack, yes. A chicken parm is, in many ways, a pretty simple dish, right? It's the chicken, the breading, the sauce, and the cheese. Right. Not that much going on. Um, What I love about Italian American restaurants is when you look at all of their menus, they're basically all the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And Italian American restaurants, the great ones, most of them have been there for a very, very long time. Um, And almost all of them have chicken parm on the menu. Um, It says a lot about the ethos of the people behind the restaurant, how good the chicken parm is for the following reasons. When, when a chef makes the same dish over and over and over and over again, all night, every night for years, <laughs> right. one of two things happens. In one case, they get bored, they start to phone it in, and something that may have started being great gets more and more and more mediocre. Hmm. The other kind of person though, looks at it as an opportunity every single day to take this thing and make it marginally better. And over the course of time, that restaurant is suddenly serving something iconic. There's a movie, uh, Giro Dreams of Sushi. I'm not sure if you've ever- Yes, I've seen it uh, at the Subway Sushi Creator in Japan. Yes. Yes. And like when you hear him talk about cooking rice and how it took him decades to learn how to cook the rice just so. Right, right, right. there's, There's unbelievable passion, right? People that derive significant pleasure out of repetition. They don't get bored by it. But they find like this well, like beautiful art form, food right? It's like pottery thing. making yeah. the perfect perfect bowl. Uh, uh, you know, there is something there is something meditative yes. about doing the thing that's seemingly simple from the outside observer, like tap dancing. Oh, it seems so simple to do. You yes. try to tap dance, you're like, well, I really can't do this at all. 
<laughs> yeah, and I would argue, I would argue that making rice seems a lot simpler than than tap dancing. But but so chicken parm, I I put like right in there, right? So you look at the chicken parm; it's the breading, the flavor of the breading, how crispy the chicken gets. It's the sauce, right? The sauce is a cornerstone of any Italian American restaurant. How and they make a lot of sauce. I'm guessing they do a lot of sauce making. Yeah, and the sauce kind of defines the restaurant. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm the question. Do they change the sauce depending upon whether it goes with the chicken parm or does it just go with, with the pasta? Is that most different? Most of the time you have your tomato sauce. I mean, like, listen, there's okay. different sauces for different pastas, but the tomato sauce is the tomato sauce. Awesome. Um, then what mozzarella are you buying? What Parmesan are you buying? Mm. Um, is it seasoned just right? Is it all in the right proportions? Not so much sauce and cheese that it kind of makes the chicken itself soggy. I... I just think that if you go to a restaurant that's been there for a long time, serving the same dish tens of thousands of times, yeah. still look at it as an opportunity to take something simple and make it great. You know you're in very capable. Yeah, it's when you think about the complexity or the simplicity of the dish and then how to you know, without adding on like fusion elements from like soy sauce in there. Not that that's, is that a thing? I don't know. Anyway, uh, uh, the, the, that thought is super, super cool. I want to move you on to number two. Well, but I, I just want to add one more thing. Yes, like please. it is easier to impress people. And this isn't just about food. This is about like creativity generally by just throwing more stuff on the plate. <laughs> Right. It's easier. It's easy to it if you just throw make, make it more complex looking. More complex, more complex, more complex. You can like, awe people. But right. the less things on the plate, the less things you're doing, the less creative moves you're pulling off. Yeah. Or perfect every one of those elements needs to be. Huh. You know? Oh. And oh. sometimes I think a lot of places they rush to innovate and evolve and reinvent mm -hmm. before they've actually perfected the foundation of who they are. Fascinating. So I'm a big fan of music. Uh, 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 everyone who knows me knows this, but uh, Frank Sinatra uh, uh, is a. <laughs> I'm sorry. So you require it's required. It's an absolute requirement. <laughs> no, but it is, it is an absolute must requirement. Have. It's a must have. You have to have it. Yeah. <laughs> Let and me hear I'll, why. What and I'll tell you why. What makes it? Have you ever gone to see one of your favorite bands? Bands, just like overall bands in life. A band generally. Like a yeah, famous band. Yeah. You ever like seen, yeah. I've always seen Rolling many, many Stones movies. play or Neil Young or Bob I just, Dylan. I saw Billy Joel a couple years ago. Uh, that was awesome for me. Okay, so I, imagine I, if you went to see Billy Joel. Yeah. And he had just recorded a new album. That would be surprising because he hasn't done that for like 40 years. But okay, let's say he did. And the only thing he played at the concert were songs off the new album. How would you feel? I would... I would, there would be, I would, I'd be excited to hear the new stuff, but I'd be like, I want to, I want to hear Vienna. <laughs> yeah. You want to hear Vienna. You want to hear Piano Man. Piano you want to hear yeah. like the yes. things so that you love. There's a collective cooperative. We all feel the same way about this song. All the fans, sort of this collective unconscious, all, all together feeling the same way about the song. So this is my belief about how to serve people. I think okay. it's appropriate to feel like, an opportunity or a responsibility to introduce people to new things. Right. I do. I also think you need to give people what they want. <laughs> Which is Frank Sinatra. And when I'm eating an extraordinary chicken parm, if I don't hear Sinatra at some point in that meal, they are not giving me what they what I want. I don't feel seen. I feel like they're trying so hard to introduce me to new things. That they're oh, not serving me in the way that I want to be served. Huh. And, and I think sometimes innovation gets in the way of actually pleasing your guests. And huh. man, Italian, Italian American restaurants like meatballs, chicken parm, a glass of Chianti, you better play some Sinatra. I was going to say, you've got the wine in there as well. The Sinatra, is there, I just because I'm now curious, would you have, is there a particular, you know, because Sinatra went through multiple phases of his career was is is it any sinatra accessible or is it always like... i mean you'd have to you'd have to pull from the italian american restaurant uh chapter <laughs> of genre life. i mean that's like a very that's a very specific <laughs> genre from his career and that's oh man that is awesome i love that one but you know the songs when you hear them 
I love that one. Um, I, I, you, where you went with the third one um, on on making it felt like family. Is that is that what you said? What was it? What was your well, third one again? I said that whether you've been to the restaurant or not, the moment you walk in, you feel like a regular. I, I think the way you articulated it though is another perfect way to express it. That when you go to these places, you feel like family. Yeah, and when I I read your book, um, it was a little. Uh, gosh, I was I. I've been I'd been to Eleven Madison Park, um, uh, and I didn't realize the intensity. I, I'm not. I hope this is a spoiler alert. But in the book, you talk about how you actually um, researched the individuals that would come to the restaurant. A little bit of Google stalking, and so that when they arrived, they would be greeted by name and then ushered without a podium. Uh, this is the change. Without a podium, yes. ushered. Uh, uh, to their table, that is a immediate change, like like b- mind blowingly. Like, wh- how do you know who I am? Is this yeah. part of your? I'm sorry, I don't. I, I don't. Maybe you're stealing it from Italian American restaurants. Uh, but is this 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 feeling that feeling of family? I just want to connect it to a part of the book that I really yeah, enjoy. No, I appreciate that. Well, so what we did. I mean, listen, I, I do believe hospitality is is making people feel seen and known and making them feel yeah. like they belong and. Man, I don't care who you are. If you walk somewhere, you walk into a restaurant or really any business and and they're like, hey, Will, welcome. We're so excited to have you. You yeah. immediately feel you feel something that's hard to feel in, in any other way. And totally. but no, that was us taking a, a, a more unreasonable and intentional I approach. Really, I really think you went a little like this is cool. this is this is I'll, I'll, this is the way I'll describe the Italian American restaurant. So my okay, last name is Gadera. I'm an Italian American. Yeah. Um, there's a club here in New York City called Tiro Asenio, and it's an Italian American club. And you have to have Italian American heritage to to be a part of the club. And I'm a member there. Um, it's it's down just south of Washington Square Park. And then with COVID, I haven't been there for years, but it's a membership that I love. And so I refuse to let go of it. And I was there with a buddy of mine, like four months ago, first time I'd been there in a really long time. And I was giving him a tour. It's these like three townhouses that are connected. Normally you eat on the ground floor, but there's like these like entertainment rooms upstairs. And I was giving him a tour and we kind of got to the second floor. And one of the guys that worked there who I know was like, Hey, let me show you back here. And he brings us down to a hallway. And at the end of the hallway was an office where the accountant sits. Um, And the door to her office was open. And the guy who I know said, Hey, Maria, it's Will Gadara. And she goes, my favorite member. I had never met her before in my life. We had no idea who I was. Which, <laughs> she just like said my favorite member as like, if. That's my favorite member. And in front, my of my friend, one. in front of my friend, I felt like a million bucks. <laughs> and I had, the, I had to be honest with him. I told him, I was like, she has no idea who I am. But like, <laughs> they're so great awesome. at making people feel good. Like I did feel like I was a part of her family in that moment because you know what? Like, they recognize mm. how powerful it is when someone like genuinely feels like they belong, when someone feels seen not just as a commodity, but as a unique individual that, that deserves to be there, that belongs there. I, I think that people generally, we're all looking for, for the place that we belong. And, and in a great Italian American restaurant, you walk in, someone who you've never met in your entire life, the way they say welcome, it makes you feel like you grew up around the block from him. Mm, that and, is such a great insight, just to know that family feeling. But that can apply to kind of, I know you wrote this, wrote this a little as a business book as well, because it can apply to so many different things. It really can. Well, yeah, I mean, I wrote that book about, hospitality as it pertains to leadership and service. And yes, yes, I come from restaurants, but I believe the lessons that I learned over the 20 plus years um, I worked in restaurants can apply to any customer service. But I also think, you know, so many of the lessons in there that boil down to relationship lessons. How do you engage Mm -hmm. in thoughtful relationships with the people you work with and those you serve? And I think there's lessons from Italian American restaurants that can make your life <laughs> relationships better too. 
Well, I mean, chicken parm, like if you can make something that you make, I mean, listen, we all make food all the time, right? If you can suddenly and subtly impact and make it better each time you make it, I make a great uh, chili, for example, I think I do. Uh, you know, I like to think I can make it better each time. Um, or, like, or here's one, like a chicken parm, and I'm going to really stretch this. For a okay, I'm re ready. Um, in my marriage, I can focus the energy I put into our time together mm -hmm. on the once in a while, big, fancy, elaborate date nights. And that's cool. But if I haven't figured out how to maximize just the normal Wednesday night we have together in our mm -hmm. apartment and figured out how to make those nights as special and meaningful as possible, I haven't earned the special date nights, right? Like I would rather have mm -hmm. five quality connective nights with my wife a week than one every month. And it, and it, it really requires like putting just as much creativity and intention to the simple things as you do to the complicated things. Wow. Will, I love this. I love, I love what you wrote. I love your three things. I love that you're passionate about Italian American restaurants and you know for sure uh, three things. I frankly did not even consider chicken parm, Sinatra and making you feel at home or like family. That is really, really cool. I mean, now you have your checklist. Now you can and go to the Italian American restaurant. I could, go, I could go start one tomorrow. Will, thank you so much for doing the show with me. I just loved having you on. I can't wait to see, uh, to read the, the book. And I'm, um, I'm super lucky to have had you on the show. Thank you so much for having me. You are welcome, sir. Mm -hmm.